Peace and love, everyone, and welcome to the Minister Supreme Show. I'm your host, Minister Supreme, and this is the only show where how you feel doesn't change what's real. I hope everyone had a good week. We're back with a great topic, with another great show. Of course, how we do it here is bring you a question, present information, and afterwards, see if you still think about that the same way you did in the beginning and have the same answer that you had, all right? So, today's topic of the show is astrology and tarot. I know. That's a major topic in the community. These, that's say within the last five years or so, the black community has really embraced astrology and tarot. And y'all know that the white community, is, is, they've been on their magical, spiritual, tree-hugging, pill-popping, all that good type of stuff. They've been on that tip for a minute, that you know, Woodstock type of action. You know, but black people, we, we've been kind of, we've been skeptical about that. But as of late, not so much. So why not talk about it? So the question of today is, is astrology and tarot reading verified science or not? Is astrology and tarot reading verified science or not? Now when I say verified science, what do I mean? Alright, we're talking about actual science and what science is defined as in, I guess we will talk, uh, say, Western philosophy. And um, science, according to Western philosophy, has three fundamental features, and that is systematic empiricism, empirical questioning, and public knowledge. If a subject matter fits in all three of these categories, it's considered a science. All right? Now, what are these categories by definition? Systematic empiricism, right? It's learning based on observation, scientific learning systematically. All right? Empirical questions, questions about the way it is that can be answered by systematic observation. And an example of that would be a question on the value and morality, right? You can question whether or not something is or isn't, but you cannot question or scientifically go through a process of if it's morally correct or not. That's all going to be individually based. And because of that, it doesn't fit in the realm of empirical questioning, therefore not being a science. Following me? All right. Last one is public knowledge. Published information based on scientific findings. If you can have a public information, like in the reference section of a library or a journal or a thesis or anything like that that has been published and recognized in the scientific world, that's, that would be considered public knowledge. And if a subject matter has had information put out in that form, it's considered a science. All right? So, so keep all that in mind when we're talking about astrology and tarot in this particular show. Okay? We'll be right back after this. astrology. First and foremost, any word that ends with ology is talking about the study of whatever came before it. So this particular word is astrology, and that is the study of the stars, right? Now, the common accepted definition goes a little more like this. Any various ceremonial, religious, and divinatory practices which claim to discern information about human affairs and terrestrial events by studying the movements and relative positions of celestial objects. And celestial means you know, outer space or belonging to you know, the heavens or supremely good. That's the definition of celestial. So that's the common understanding and accepted definition of what astrology is. But at its base level, 
Astrology is simply the study of the stars. Remember that. That big long definition, that's cool. But remember the basic definition, the study of the stars, right? Then you have what's called astronomy. Now, at one point in time, these two sciences were interchangeable. When I say sciences right now, because my mind, I'm going to say something different later about what they actually are. These two sciences were once like interchangeable, but they have been separate over time because of the long definition I gave you about astrology earlier, right? Now, astronomy, it ends with anomy. And that's different than the ology. If a word ends with anomy, it's no longer talking about the study of something. It's talking about the management of something. The body of information about the word or the prefix that came before it. So this particular subject, again, is still astro. So we're talking about the management of the stars or the information contained about the stars. That's astronomy. The management and the information contained of the stars, which is different than astrology, which is the study of the stars. Now, you would think naturally that you would have to have one to get the other. Like, you can't study the stars without understanding the management and the body of knowledge that the stars consist of. So you would think that an astrologist and astronomer would be one and the same, but they're not. Just like astronomy and astrology are both not considered sciences. Only one is considered a science because only one can be verified by scientific methods and studies. All right? And that's astronomy. Astrology is considered what they call a pseudoscience. Now, what exactly is a pseudoscience? A pseudoscience is... A collection of beliefs or practices mistakenly regarded as being based on scientific facts. That's what they call astrology in the Western world. Keep that in mind because how they look at astrology is totally different in the East. And that's because astrology has been uh, studied and been uh, a science or a thing of interest for people since people have been people. Shit, far back as I can think, <laughs> I can think of. I mean, you think, think about the Egyptians, the Babylonians the Mesopotamians, all these different groups of people have their um, uh, study or their practices of divinatory uh, connection when it comes to um, the stars. All the way down to sun signs, all the way down to the woman and her moon uh, relationship to the cycle of the moon. There's always a connection to people and what goes on in the stars, or what they call the heavens. All the way down to the seven hermetic principles where it says, as above, so below. And I'm going to get more into that after this break. before astrology has been around since shit, people have been around right but according to the researchers astrology is said to have originated in mesopotamia around the third millennium bc then spread to india but it developed in the western form through the greek civilization during the hellenistic period all right now you have a man by the name of Alan Leo. Well, that wasn't his actual name. That's the name that he gave himself. Leo was the house that he was born on. That was his zodiac sign, so he made that his monarchy. Alan Leo. Anyway, Alan Leo is who they consider the father of modern-day astrology. He, he published a book called The Art of Synthesis in 1912, right? But it's the thing about Alan Leo. Alan Leo is said to have went to India for study and then came back and publish his findings. And you can call them findings, but they're not findings. They're, they were teachings that were given to him if he actually went to India. But Alan Leo is who they call your um, father of modern-day astrology, okay? For those of you who study astrology but don't actually know the history of it. All right, now this is what Berkeley had to say about astrology. Astrology is not a very specific way to answer questions. Although astrologers seek to explain the natural world, they do not usually attempt to critically evaluate whether those explanations are valid, which is a key part in science. All right? That's what Berkeley has to say about astrology. All right. The Western world, the Western world, the Western world. I keep saying that because the way astrology is viewed in the West, United States of America, 
It's totally different the way they view it across the pond, which is called overseas for those of y'all who don't travel much. All right. Now, in India, astrology is not only accepted as, an, as a science, it's taught at the collegiate level. Here's a quote from Aristotle. Whatever is born or done at that moment in time has the quality of that moment in time. Now, what exactly does that mean? That means when a person is born, right, their birth date, the time they were born and all that, when that, when that thing happens, when that birth takes place, Everything that was going on at the time of that birth shared the qualities of that birth and vice versa, right? That's what Aristotle was pretty much saying with this quote. So when you hear people say that they're a Pisces or that they're a Leo or that whatever zodiac that they throw out there to you, when they say that, they're saying that they share the qualities of that particular sign because they were born and captured that moment of time within themselves. Make sense? Okay. The Minister Supreme Show is brought to you by Lex Brand Names and Apparel, a division of Lex Brand Development. Lex Brand Names is our way of transforming symbols and images that currently exist in your everyday life into something more valuable, greater, and more meaningful. Lex Brand. They won't understand it until you Lex Brand it. All right. Welcome back to all my Christian people, churchgoers faith holders and believers who think that stuff like studying stars and astrology and tarot are devil worship and bad and against Christ and you're going to hell and whoever deemed you the person to say stuff like that, that's another subject. Anyway, Luke 21, 25. Yes, the Bible. I'm going there. There shall be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. Luke 21, 25. There shall be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. Now, I was always taught that when people say, God, give me a sign, they're asking for guidance or help or some type of, of, of indicator, right, that, that God is with them or that they're on the right path or something to help them along the way, right? A sign. That's what signs typically do. They, they help you along the way. You see a stop sign, nigga, stop. That's pretty much what that means. If you don't put the, pump the brakes... When this sign is present, there's a good chance that harm can come about you. That's a sign. It's been given to you, right? There shall be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. Sun, moon, and stars, those are the planets. That's the universe, right? What um, study, uh, field of study, rather, goes into the universe? Astronomy and astrology, right? Well, that's what the definition said earlier in the show. Well, at least, unless I'm not going on the right research. That's the definition. So, if there's going to be signs in the sun, moon, and stars, according to the Bible, according to the book of Luke, then we should be paying attention to the sun, moon, and stars. And in order to pay attention to the sun, moon, and stars, you got to study them. You got to study them. And astrology is the study of the stars. Right? According to the definition, according to the word, you have to study them. So, my Christian people, what I'm saying is this. Even your own book is telling you to study the stars. So when you find people around you who are into astrology, who are into tarot, um, oracle uh, cards and things of that nature, don't look at them side-eyed. Don't look at them like they are doing something against the will of God. Even your book is telling them to do what they're doing. You're going against the will of God. And that's if that's the case, because your book is telling you to study. I'm just saying. Another example of astrology in the Bible is if you take everything out of its literal context and look at it allegorically and metaphorically, right? For example, Moses. When Moses killed the bull, if you know anything about the Bible and, 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 and the text, and the Christian text, when Moses killed the bull, the, the bull that the people were worshiping while he was away receiving the message, when Moses killed the bull, metaphorically, that is the killing or the death or the end of the season of the Taurus, because the animal for the Taurus is the bull. And that's the end, that's the Old Testament. And when the New Testament is brought in, we are we are introduced to Jesus. And Jesus is what? The Pisces. And what animal is represented for the Pisces? The fish. What did Jesus serve the people? The fish. 
So if you take everything out of its literal context and put it metaphorically, you can find astrology also in the Bible. All right, we dealt with astrology, which is only half of today's topic. The other half is tarot. But since we left off in the Bible, I want to stay there because, hey, if we can find astrology in the Bible, maybe we can find tarot in the Bible. You can't find tarot in the Bible. Man, it's the prima simple. Tarot is not in the Bible. Just not. Have you looked? I did. And guess what I found? Ezekiel 110. Uh-oh, Christians. Hold on to your faith, people. Here we go. Their faces look like this. Each of the four had the face of a human being. And on the right side, each had the face of a lion. And on the left, the face of an ox. Each also had the face of an eagle. If you know anything about tarot, if you've ever dealt with tarot cards, there's this card called the world card. And the world card is what they call a major arcana or trump card. We'll, we'll get into definitions of all that in a second. But on that particular card, in each corner of that card, and that card represents completion. Don't ask me how I know. I'm going to tell you later. That card represents completion. And each corner of that card is the human being, the lion, the ox, and the eagle. Now, how did that happen? And how did you Christians let that one slip by you? Now, what is tarot? For all of you who know nothing about it, for those of you who are just getting introduced to it, and for those of you who claim to be per, like professionals of tarot reading, listen up. Tarot, derived from Teruchi, in Italian, root word Teruch, meaning foolishness. So Tarot literally means foolishness. This is not a good start for Tarot. Now, more than likely, from my study, what it looks like, I think that the foolishness thing came from the extra card that was added to the deck, which would be the fool, right? Now, it was invented from my studies. Correct me if I'm wrong, which means leave me a comment. Tell me I'm telling the truth. Tell me I'm full of, you know, whichever one you prefer. I'm with all of it. 1430. It was invented in Italy, right? So here's how, here's how it goes. You got the four, the four decks, I mean the four suits and a deck of cards, right? The cards that we know of here in the U.S., you got the hearts, clubs, spades, and diamonds, right? You got those four suits. Tarot is the fifth added suit to a deck of cards, okay? And those were called triumphs or trump cards. Now, when you look at the four I originally mentioned, they line up identically with the cards that you can find in the tarot deck. So your hearts, that's your cups, because that's emotions, the heart, okay? Clubs, like a club, bing, bing, bing. that's your wands, clubs, wands, same instrument pretty much, right? The um, and, that, and that's dealing with the uh, spirituality, pardon me, I have to keep that going as well. Um, the diamonds, that's your pinnacles, money, finances, diamonds. See the connection, right? And the last one is spades, which is your swords. Have you ever played a game of spades when everybody played their card down? If you ain't got that one, and you better, you better, you better slap a spade down. What they say that you're cutting, you're cutting with spades. You cut that, you cut with a sword, right? Right. And that deals with the mind. All right. So those are the four um, suits that are in a deck of cards that are also found in tarot if you put them side by side and relate them all together. Now, it started off as a regular playing card game, like like all card games, like how we play spades and rummy and solitary and all that kind of stuff. It was a regular card game, right? It was inspired by the theatrical festivals that were popular during the Italian Renaissance amongst the nobles and the aristocrats. They were the ones who added the extra cards known as the trump cards or the tarot cards. So in a tarot deck, the only actual cards that are tarot cards are the, the, the ones that were added into the fifth suit. Everything else is just a regular card with a different name, if you really think about it. All right? But it became a time from 1430 to the 1700s, it was just a regular regular card game. Then there came this thing called um, cardamency, 
Now, cardamancy is fortune telling by interpreting a random selection of playing cards. It became an actual thing, actual science, right? Then, well, not science, but an actual thing. Then you have a man by the name of Jean Baptiste Aletti, right? This is around 1700s. He will be uh, deemed a coin with, to be the first person to publish a guide to card reading and gave each card a meaning. From this point on, the tarot decks or the cards began to be used for uh, divination purposes. Now, you, now people started using these cards not just to play games, but to um, predict events, to uh, not necessarily tell the future, but like I said, to predict the events and, and talk about things going on from the past and the present and what could possibly happen in the future. Now, tarot in the black community, I'll be honest with you, Never thought I would see it happen. Astrology, I can kind of see that one. But tarot, never thought I would see that happen. I mean, black people are, for the most part, very religious people, especially in, the, in, in America. Black people in other places, you know, they got their spiritual connections. But in, in America, we have very religious, heavily Christian, especially in the Bible Belt, heavily Christian people here in America. So it shocked me when, when, when the development within the last five years, five to seven years or so, when people started picking up, black people started picking up on tarot, right? So if you go to YouTube right now, right, and you type in um, tarot for whatever your sign is, I guarantee you're going to get about five white women and then three or four black women and then some more white women. Maybe the white dude. And then some more black women. It just, it just shocked me to see my own people. We have representation in the tarot world. Can I get a round of applause for that? <laughs> All right, so how did it happen? Black women. Black women is how it happened. If you look at black history outside of America, if you think about the uh, Orishas, right, or the, or the Yoruba tribes and things of that nature, there were always um, spiritual representation through feminine energy, right? If you look at uh, us today, men, we are more logical. We're more practical, hands-on. Women are more emotional, are more spiritual, intuitive, right? That's the difference. So it was the black women who gravitated towards Tarot, not the black man. You ain't, you ain't gonna find too many brothers who actually a believe in tarot. And I say believe because that's typically what it, it boils down to. You ain't gonna find too many black men who actually believe in tarot, let alone practice it themselves. It's rare. It's very, very rare. Okay, so. Black women are the reason that tarot is in the black community. And I personally would like to thank them for that because it's just like dealing with mental health in the black community. Certain things we just have not had access to, whether it be intentional or not, we have not had access to certain things like uh, astrology or tarot or mental health or uh, wellness. They like like certain like things like we just weren't, uh, that wasn't, wasn't available to us. And now that it is, we just take advantage of it. Because, again, I'm not here to say that tarot is real or is not. That's for you to determine. My job is to present you information for you to easy, uh, to make that decision easier on yourself. Because most of y'all, especially in today's society, are not going to read. Most of y'all are not going to read anything past a, a one or two paragraph post on social media. So I'm, I'm condensing the information for you to help you make a decision for yourself. Who does that these days? Now, I know, let's get to the actual question. Is tarot real, right? Now, the answer to that question is going to rely heavily on the subconscious interpretation of the reader, which means how much the person who's doing the reading knows about the cards, how much they know about the stars, and also how much they know about the person who they're doing the reading for will heavily determine how accurate the reading that they're giving is going to be. With that being said, it's up to the receiver of the reading to determine the accuracy of the reading itself and the legitimacy of the person who's giving the reading. There's no scale of measurement or no scientific method to regulate or verify or test the reader's ability to perform a reading 
professionally or accurately. Now, let's go into the part of astrology and tarot that science, for the most part, for lack of a better word, simply just cannot explain, right? There's this thing that's called energy, right? And there's this thing that's called intention or intentional energy, which is pretty much the the crux of, of astrology and tarot, especially tarot, right? When you're dealing with cards, because the way it goes is uh, you are supposed to be feeding your energy as the person doing the reading. You're supposed to be feeding your energy into these cards in order to get an accurate card to come out. Here's the thing about that though. If you know enough about the cards and if you know enough about the stars, it doesn't matter what card comes out. You'll be able to under, to gain an understanding and receive some type of message from the cards that are presented to you. So it's not like if I do a reading right now, right in front of you, right now on air, and, 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 and ask the one question, right? And I say I do a five-card spread. I do a five-card spread with one question, right? I pick those cards up. I shuffle those cards, right? Do my energy in again and again, right? Ask the exact same question. I'm not going to get the same five cards with the exact same question. Why? Mm, let's say the energy is different. My intention is different because now I'm trying to prove something, which was different than my first intention was to get an answer for a question. Right? So my intention is different. Time is different. Because remember we said earlier, it captures that moment of time. So the time in which I did the first reading and the time in which I did the second reading is not the same time. So there's two different moments of time that's being captured. So we're not going to have the same card. This is a way that someone could explain it to you. I'm not saying this is how it is and it isn't. I'm just saying this is a way that someone could explain it to you if they were to ask about how you can determine the accuracy of a reading. All right, people. There you have it. Astrology. Is it a verifiable science? No. It is pseudoscience in Western philosophy. When you go outside the confines of America, yes, astrology is viewed as an actual verifiable science. It has been around longer than the people who can determine whether or not something is an actual verifiable science. It's just the reality. Okay? Tarot. Is it real? Is it not? That depends on the person who sat down in front of the reader to get the reading. If you receive a reading from someone and it connects with you, it's real. If it doesn't, it's not. The bigger question is for this whole show, what defines real? That's the bigger question. Because what's real to you may not be real to the next person. Reality to one is not reality to the next. That's a whole nother show though. All right. So I hope you guys are well informed about astrology and tarot now that you can easily make or better make your decisions on determining what is real and what isn't when dealing with these subject matters. Make sure y'all come back next week for the topic of, drum roll please, are psychedelics a key for the black community to opening up themselves? Psychedelics the key for the black community to open up themselves. What I mean by that, open up themselves. I mean for black for black people to open themselves up to new possibilities, new ideas, open their minds up beyond the, the, the constricted forms of religion, open their minds up beyond beyond the nine to five, open their minds up beyond the typical patterns that they have been that's been laid out for them before they were even born. Your whole life is already laid out for you before you're born if you want to be on autopilot, all right? According to some, psychedelics have the ability to take us off of autopilot. If that's the case, maybe that's something that we as a community could use to our benefit. But first, we have to understand what they are, what they do, and how they can help us, all right? So that's next week's show, all right? Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this show. Was I right? Was I wrong? Did I hit the mark? 
you tell me. I read all comments, and if it's worth talking about it and any more on the air, we'll talk about it on the air. Even if I got to reach out to you personally, I'll do it. Don't think I won't. Until next time, Mrs. Supreme Show, where how you feel doesn't change what's real. Peace. The Minister Supreme Show is brought to you by Lex Brand Names and Apparel, a division of Lex Brand Development. Lex Brand Names is our way of transforming symbols and images that currently exist in your everyday life into something more valuable, greater, and more meaningful. Lex Brand. They won't understand it until you Lex Brand it.